Can anyone tell me how I can remove that cross in the middle of the word violet? Not sure what it's for, but I don't know what prompted it to appear. Thanks. This is a question that came up in the Facebook group not too long ago, and I think it's a very valid question. The members did come to her aid and it was resolved quickly. However, there are a few other annoying things that may happen in Silhouette Studio, and we're going to run through how to fix them so that you have your answer right away. Hi, I'm Brenda Lambert. I'm a TJC licensed instructor for Silhouette, you found your way to Silhouette Success, and if you have been around for any time at all, you know that I am a huge fan of the software, but that doesn't mean I love every aspect of it. This video is all about making sure you have the best experience with the software so that you can love it too. One of my pet peeves with the software is if I go to the drawing tools or type out some text, create an element, it comes in with no fill color and the red cut line. And this isn't a huge deal except for the fact that if you click anywhere in the middle of the shape, you cannot select it. You have to click right on the cut line in order to do anything with it. This really only becomes an issue if you have multiple elements close together. We'll even make that one overlapping just so you can see what I'm talking about. Now these are very close together and if I try to select one or select the other, it's kind of hard to tell which one you are grabbing at that point in time. In order to fix this, you can go down to your preferences here, click on that little gear, head over to defaults, which is the second tab, and come down here where it says default fill style. You can select solid fill instead of outline only click apply and then okay. Now when I head over to my drawing tools and grab a rectangle and draw that out, it comes in filled with color and it's much easier to grab and move around. The second thing that I found mildly annoying when I first started using the software is that by default, when you draw out a shape from your drawing tools, it just stays on draw a shape. And I had no idea how to fix that. In reality, you just need to come up here and click on your selector tool and then it will stop drawing the shapes and you can manipulate the elements that are on your design page. We're going to go back to that little gear icon. That's the preferences. This time we are going to go over to tools and you can see your tools are listed here. This one says after creating a shape and here it says continue drawing shapes. You can click on this little arrow here and change it to choose select, apply, okay. Now I can draw out a shape and it goes right back to my selector tool and if I want to draw another shape, then I will click on that shape again and draw that out. You can do that with each of the tools in that panel. The next feature that we are going to look at is a snap to. You can either snap to the grid or you can snap to guides or you can enable smart snapping. Let's look at snap to grid first. This is all drawn out and if you try to move it, it kind of jumps and it aligns it to the mat according to the grid lines. It, you can't get a nice smooth small bump over. Let me disable that for a minute and show you here. I can just move it freely when it is checked. It does the jumping motion and it's harder to place exactly where you want it. So this is good for aligning things to the grid on the mat. Not so good for placing something exactly where you want it. Let's uncheck snap to grid and look at snap to guides. We can bring down a guide from the top or we can bring over a guide from the side and all you do is click on your ruler over here and pull it over. Click on the ruler at top and pull it over. We don't really need that many, so we can right click, delete all guides, and we will just start with one here. 
So I have my guide in place. Let's enable snap to guides. And then if you click on your element and try to bump it up a little bit, it'll be drawn to that guide kind of like a magnet. And it will stop right there. And you can move it around so that it's not snapping to the guide. But when you get within a certain distance, then it will snap. Let's turn that off, draw out a couple more rectangles here. If we enable smart snapping, you will see the blue lines light up when they are aligned and it kind of clicks into place, same as if it were snapping to the guides. These tools are really good for helping you align elements in your design, but they are only helpful if you do in fact want them lined up. The next feature we are going to look at is center of rotation. And this one is super annoying because it can be turned on and off simply by clicking O on your keyboard. That brings up this circle with the cross in the middle and that is called your center of rotation. And it is useful when you are, say, using the replicate panel and you're working with object on path or when you're working with the rotate tab in the transform panel. So the center of rotation is in the center here and we click rotate by 45 degrees and it does just that. Set it back where it was and pull the center of rotation down to the corner. Now click on rotate by 45 degrees and you will see you get a different result there. So again, this feature is useful. It's only annoying when it is turned on by accident and you cannot figure out how to turn it off. The good news is you can simply put it back in the center and click O and it will be gone. If you do use center of rotation often, you can go to your preferences once again. This is in the defaults tab and you can check this box here. Apply, OK and then your center of rotation will just stay on. Then you can toggle it on and off with the O button as well, but by default, it will be turned on. Last but not least, we have our crosshairs. These are turned on and off simply by typing H on your keyboard. You'll see that the crosshairs pop up, and this again is an alignment tool and can be super helpful. Some users keep this turned on all the time, I find it rather distracting and I very rarely turn them on. If you find that you have turned these on by accident, you can either type H on your keyboard and they will disappear, or you can go to your page setup panel, the second tab, and click on crosshairs here. And that will toggle them on and off as well. If you have a question that you feel is worthy of a video, go ahead and leave it in the comments below or head over to Facebook and join the group over there. We'd love to have you. In the meantime, create something amazing and I'll see you in the next video.